Welcome to today's episode of NBA Big Board. We have our lottery results in, and I'm going to give you my mock draft for the first 13 picks. Stay tuned. Hi, James Barlow here with Leaf. Thank you again for making Locked On NBA Big Board your first listen of the day. This uh, episode today is brought to you by Prize Picks, the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Go to prizepicks.com backslash locked on NBA and use code all lowercase locked on NBA for a first deposit up to $100. All right, so the results are in. Let's get right to it. So the mocks came out. The Hawks snuck up in here. And somehow they ended up with the number one pick. Um, and I, this is my mock. Leaf is here to ask me a couple questions. So uh, we had mentioned before on previous mock drafts and previous, uh, you know, that we talked about who we like. So like seeing the Hawks draft Alex Sar shouldn't be a question or shouldn't be new if you've been keeping up with us. So I like Sar here um, in my head before I even started the, the mock process. I was thinking maybe the Hawks blow it up. Maybe they're not committed to it. Um, if they do commit to it, I can see a situation where they bring in Nikola Topic, but it's going to take like a massive blow up with them having two point guards there. Uh, but you know, Sar feels a need for them right now. He's very talented. I think he tested well um, at the combine. Uh, again, athlete. I seeing him and Jalen Johnson. If they decide to keep Trey Young or Dejon Murray, um, those are some serious lob threats to have in the full court. I think Capella's days are done in Atlanta, and um, I don't quite know for sure if. Okongu is a starter, but maybe he's a starter early on. But either way, you go at Alex Sar. And I feel like the Hawks should go for a rebuild, but we just, we'll see what they decide to do. Uh, second up, I have the Wizards selecting, as the previous, as I previously mentioned, Nikola Topic. Uh, I think he is legit. I love his vision. I love his playmaking. I think he can get to the rim. Uh, I feel like he would work there in Washington with them being full steam ahead in the rebuild. And also, um, you know, it keeps him in line for, you know, the coveted 2025 draft. I do have concerns about his health. He did go down a little bit at the end of the uh, season. It was a knee sprain, very fortunately for him and really for everybody, excuse me, involved. But, you know, you want to see the young fella healthy. But I really like him in the Wizards. And I think that he has a chance to be the one of the best players in this draft. Uh, third, I have, and I feel like I'm the only one that has Rob Dillingham slotted to Houston. Um, I feel like Rob Dillingham, I mean, you know, again, if you've been keeping up with me, I'm a big fan in the perfect scenario. He goes to the uh, Spurs, but in my head, I'm like, you know, if I'm the Rockets, you know, you, you, you're not, and if you keep the pick, you want to optimize and say, I want the best player available who has the most upside. Uh, so let, let me ask a question here. Uh, two, two questions about the last two picks. So for the Rockets, Dillingham's not going to be the most popular because they have Van Fleet and because, you know, they got young pieces who have the ball in their hands and he tends to be someone who's going to have the ball in his hands. Like that's what you want. That's the upside we talk about. I'm really high on him. You're really high on Dillingham. Mm -hmm. So why do you take him? over a guy like Klingon, who might be immediately more complimentary to their team. And I know they have Shangun, but Shangun's skill sets are very different from Klingon's, and that's kind of the most typical pick. And then number two, why would you take Topic over Dillingham, someone that or, or Klingon? And those those are the two that I kind of think are are mocked together pretty closely. And then so why are you differing from the norm? And I, I don't necessarily disagree with you. I'm just just trying to pick the brain about the process. So with Topic first in Washington, I, I, I like Klingon. And I feel like you can get another big in the second part of the first round because they have, I believe, the 26th pick in the draft. And I feel like there's going to be talent there, too. And, uh, you know, 
as good as Klingon has been on defense, we've seen him only play 24, 25 minutes a game. I feel like Toppers projects long term to be better. Um, somebody may argue, well, you just saw what the defensive presence of Rudy Gobert has done for the Timberwolves. But ultimately, I just feel like Toppers is the better player. He has the most upside. And like you can't go really wrong anywhere because they almost have a blank slate as far as talent goes. Like I'm not picking around anybody there. But I just like Toppage better there as far as Dillingham goes. So if I'm correct, uh, Van Vliet signed a three-year deal. The third year is not fully guaranteed. Rob Dillingham shows you that he can play off the ball or on the ball. Now, if you are Houston and you're Raphael Stone, you may say, okay, we drafted Amin Thompson. We think he can handle the ball full-time or part-time. I don't necessarily buy him as a point guard because he can't shoot the basketball, and I don't think you can play point guard if you can't shoot. But if we say in three years uh, you have Rob Dillingham as a co-ball handler with Amin Thompson, like they can play, they can work together with each other because their talents and their skills don't overlap. And I feel like Thompson will be able to guard one through four. So you can almost hide Rob Dillingham if those defensive concerns, which there always will be concerns because he's a smaller guy. But if he's just not making the effort that you would want him to, to make, you can hide him on that three and D guy who's just going to stand in the corner. But you're going to need him to play harder, obviously. But also, I just feel like if the Rockets are in a space where, yes, we're young and we almost made the playoffs, but you still need some young guys and you still need to figure out who's really who. So like Jalen Green made a really big jump, but it was the the April stimulus package where a lot of guys make a big jump. So it's like I feel like Dillingham can play next to those guys and complement them, and it would it would still work. I even thought about Reed Shepard at this pick because again he is in a similar state where he's not going to take away from from I guess would you say Jalen Green is your best player, but also I didn't go clean in here because I'm a big believer in Shangoon's talent. And like, I'm not going to, I'm not, he's a guy, he's the best player on that team mm-hmm. and I'm going to pick a center there. And if I really need another big, like they had success playing Jabari Smith at the end of the year too, at the five and Tari Easton will be back healthy. So it's like, I don't think adding another center to that room is good for their timeline. I think a point guard or a wing, but even, even with the wing position, uh, Cam Whitmore, minutes are there. Tari Eason can slide between a three and a four. I just, I like Dillingham. Some people say he's not a I'm a Udoka guy, but you can make an I'm a Udoka guy. Like, these guys can be molded at this age. Um, I agree with that. Uh, the only thing I would say is, if you don't have that much confidence in in some of the guards, so if, if Dillingham's there, I think there's a lot of confidence, because you and I are both very high on his upside. Mm-hmm. If Dillingham happens to go two for the Rockets, I don't necessarily love like Toppich there. So yeah, it, I it, see now. I agree with that because so, that to yeah. me is too similar to what you have in Amin Thompson. Is that a guy who might not be able to shoot? But I yeah. feel like Dillingham can be like he's not locked into like being the. He can do other things. We've seen him play off the ball, so like that role works for him in Houston. Now again, if you say Dillingham is gone in Washington, then yeah, we might have to. Yeah. We have to figure something yeah, out. I'm not I'm not trying to make up these hypotheticals. The only reason I bring that up is to point like the direction of okay, there's a lot of mocks that have a guy like Klingon, and I kind of agree with your logic if I want to let Shangun rock at the five, mm-hmm. but but there's a reason that he's mocked there because sometimes Dillingham's gone by then. So I just wanted to bring that's up that logic. A, that's a fair point. All right, fourth. Again, this is my thoughts, my thoughts only. I am a lot higher than this, the consensus on Stefan Castle. When I see Stefan Castle, and it reminds me just, you know, going back to some of his high school film, I see a Jimmy Butler type player. They move similarly. They have a similar build as far as just, you know, kind of not wiry strong, but strong build. I see a playmaking wing. I know he has, or allegedly he has said he's not working out for teams with point guards. That's neither here nor there, but I see a playmaking wing. And I feel like if there's ever a spot where somebody is going to say, Hey man, we can get that jump shot. Right. And he did shoot the ball. Well, you were there leaf. A little, little dip on the jump shot. His wrist kind of had a heavy action, but 18 to 25 spoke louder than a lot of other people's. I I think he has Jimmy Butler type like attributes. And Mm -hmm. I, I like that. So again, that's me. I'm very high on him. We need a jump shot to go, but I see that. And 
rounding out the uh, top five. Again, this is another controversial pick, I guess, to some. Uh, I had Ron Holland going to the Pistons. I know Risa Shea is there. He probably on paper fits the mold better, and he shot the ball extremely well over his last game, but I'll go with Holland there. We can go back to this. Let's take a break really quick. I would like to mention to you that this portion is brought to you by Yahoo Finance. When it comes to your financial future, you think you've done it all. You've saved, you researched, you've invested all that you can. Now you need to take those investments to the next level by using whatever financial great uses, Yahoo Finance. For more than 25 years, Yahoo Finance has been the brand behind every great investor. Whether you're a seasoned investor or looking for extra guidance, Yahoo Finance gives you all the tools and data that you need in one place. There's, there are the number one fine, they are, excuse me, the number one finance destination producing a holistic look at the financial news cycle, including breaking news, original editorial perspectives, analyst ratings, independent research, and customizable charts, and so much more. Securely link your brokerage accounts for a few, excuse me, for a unified view of your wealth including 401k and other investments. A comprehensive perspective is what sets apart great investors and it's how Yahoo Finance ensures you have the insights to look at your wealth in its entirety. With a community of over 90 million users each month, their real strength is helping you on your way to financial success. For comprehensive financial news and analysis, visit the brand behind every great investor, yahoofinance.com. The number one financial destination, yahoofinance.com. That's yahoofinance.com. All right. Let's see. In case you didn't know, let me tell you what Price Fix is. Price Fix is America's number one fantasy sports app with more than 3 million members. It's the easiest and most exciting way to get in. On the action while you watch your favorite sports and players. You just pick more or less on two or more player stats and watch the winnings roll in. You can now win up to 100 times your money on prize picks with as little as four correct picks. You can turn $10 into 1000 with basketball, hockey, and college basketball entries today on prize picks, America's number one fantasy sports app. Prize picks has something for every sports fan, from basketball and hockey to League of Legends and everything in between. You can, you can pick between Anthony Edwards, Caitlin Clark, Connor McDavid, and Jude Bellingham, all in the same entry. I've played prize picks before, but since I work for the NBA, eh, sometimes I kind of like have to chill out a little bit. But, you know, if I were going to offer you some advice, Caitlin Clark is starting to pick it up, and I think you should start to pay attention to her projections. So download the app today and use code Locked on NBA for a first deposit match on Lock. For, excuse me, up to one hundred dollars. That's locked on NBA. You'll get a first deposit match up to a hundred bucks. Pick more, pick less. It's that easy. Are you watching Fox Sports on ESPN on your TV all day? Have to turn down the volume with all the shouting? Make the switch to Locked On Sports today. A free twenty four seven sports streaming channel program for your every day to bring you the biggest stories without all the screaming. Locked On Sports Today brings you can't-miss analysis, opinions, and news. Streaming 24-7 on your YouTube or free or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Okay. Now, tease in the last segment, we talked about the Pistons and the decision that they had to make. If I were in charge of the Pistons, um, I would, you know, I'm not married to anybody on that team except for Cade Cunningham. And ultimately, I feel like Ron Holland has the most upside uh, for the guys available at this portion of the draft. Um, I mentioned before that uh, Zachary Sashay, he had a very good game. He scored 28 points. He had, I think, three or five threes. Uh, he, because he was making threes, you had to chase him off the line. And he got to the basket. He looked really good. But even with that said, I still feel like Holland is the better player and will be the better player long term. And it's going to take some development. It's going to take a whole revamp of Detroit just in general to kind of figure out where they are. I don't feel like they have a direction. And because they don't have a direction right now, you should pick the best player available. 
Uh, some people like Zealous. Some may like Reese Shea at this pick, but I feel like Holland is he's probably the guy for me. Yeah, I, I agree with you there uh, in terms of the the theory. We've talked about this in the, the couple episodes we've done together about best player available versus fit. And you and I tend to agree about best player available and, and our boards generally align with who we deem to be better players. Uh, the one thing I would say is in, in this type of draft where there's not the home runs uh, that I wonder how many teams are going to kind of draft for safe, safer options. And that typically will be fit as opposed to best player available, because sometimes there are teams that think, well, our roster is constructed as such. So maybe we'll take a guy who's conducive to the growth of the roster internally. But mm -hmm. I like the way you phrase it of Holland. Holland's the guy with the most potential to be a dude and and not even necessarily the dude, but a, a dude in, in some in some capacity, then maybe a resuche, maybe a, a better than a Buzelis. And because the Pistons don't have that many guys, even though they have a ton of young guys, maybe you just take the chances because they can afford that luxury because they're nowhere close to it. Whereas a lot of evaluators would tell you, well, they've got a few guys that they want to develop with, even if they're not mm -hmm. that great. So let's take a guy that you can slot safely. So I think that you're in the minority of, of that evaluation. But personally, I kind of like the way you're thinking about it because in a draft where there's not going to be that many stars. I feel like the, the upside plays that there's going to be some that are strikeouts, but you got to make some type type of type of risk in order to stand out in this type of draft. Yeah. And it just, it just comes down to like in five years, can this guy work with my best player, which is Kay Cunningham. And I feel like Ron can, and you, you know, it's a copycat league. And again, I'm not saying that Risa Shea can't be a great fit or who's to say he won't be an all-star, in three to five years, I'm a little lower on that trend. But at the same time, if you look at like what Jaden McDaniels is is doing in Minnesota next to to complement their star, which is Anthony Edwards, like it it works. And then if you look at on the other end, if you look at how uh, Tatum and Jalen Brown work together as two you know ball handling wings, like it can work. And it, you look at between the three of those guys, I guess you could say Tatum. Um, Anthony Edwards and we'll say Cade Cunningham like Cade is far beyond the, the best playmaker as far at this at this point of his career so it's like I feel like it can work but you know I, if somebody argue with me they would go to research and I get it but like you said I want the best player available all right number six we had and again the, this portion of it it wasn't too much as far as like eh, nothing crazy here I had Reed Shepard going to the Hornets. I think he fits. Again, we're talking about talent, fit, how he worked with the established guys. We know Brandon Miller can play. He definitely was very good. And we know that LaMelo was there. But at a certain point, I feel like, you know, you need somebody to compliment them. Uh, you could go to big here, but I think they like what they have in Mark Williams when he does play. And it keeps along. I think uh, Mark Williams keeps them aligned with what they've been doing as far as just like athletes. So I like Reed Shepard here. He can play on or, on or off the ball, very similar to Dillingham. Again, that's a good thing about playing at Kentucky is that you have to sacrifice. And I think that it works out. Uh, I know somebody asked me when I had posted this, um, who does who does he guard? Well, I think he guards whoever Terry Rozier was guarding when Terry Rozier was there. And you know, you got six nine, you got six eight, and Lamelo and and Brandon Miller. Like it works. Seven, I had Manas Buzelis. Again, if you if you're buying the if you see the potential, if you see the talent, um, you say he can turn back into the shooter that he was in high school. I think it works. I uh, I mentioned that I think Buzelis can play the four. I don't really feel like there's a big difference between a three and a four in today's NBA outside of your Aaron Gordon's, your Giannis's. Like he's no more of a four man long-term to me the way Jeremy Grant is for Portland. He's going to space and shoot and attack closeouts. I don't feel like he has an athleticism advantage, Maras, at the three, because I'm not really a big believer in him as a ball handler long-term. I think he's too straight up and down, but at the four, he's probably a better athlete to me. He looked good athletically at the combine. His shot concerned me, so now if he's able to play the four, I think that alleviates some concern that if he were mm -hmm. to like play the two, it would bring up. And I know there's people saying it's positionless, but it matters to me if I'm constructing my team, if the guy that's going to have a ball in his hands a lot 
and attack closeouts doesn't get respect for shooting. So then no one's going to close out. And like you said, I don't think he's that great of a ball handler. Um, I think Portland's an interesting landing spot because they have a lot of young guards and I don't think all of them stay the course. So mm-hmm. his, his role will evolve and change um, mm-hmm. wh- whether good or bad, depending who takes the next steps, how much they prioritize Simons, how much they prioritize sharp, how good does scoot get. Um, and so that I think changes Buzelis, whereas a lot of people projected him from the beginning of this cycle after the last one ended. Oh, OK, Buzelis is going to be a star. And that's how we have to pigeonhole him as someone who has to have the ball. And that's where a lot of the critiques came. Whereas I think a lot of the critiques now are a little bit less uh, for, uh, forced and early in his career because there's going to be a lot of other players who take away attention from him. So that's an interesting landing spot. And I'd be curious to see how he develops off the ball. I think that's his best bet. I just I'm not a buyer long term of him putting the ball on the ground consistently, at least. And it's like if you sit here and say, well, we thought he was going to be able to shoot. Well, then let's slide him in a position where he's best to do what we think he's going to do best, which is shoot the basketball. Uh, number eight, I had Dalton Connect going to the Spurs. I feel like he will definitely work in San Antonio. We know he can score the ball. He's tall he's an athlete uh, if you have defensive concerns again we got Wimby to clean that up I know the Spurs were a bottom five team as far as like three point makes and we know that he is a scorer and a shooter and I think he can help if those rumblings are true as far as like Wimby in the timeline do we want to go young do we want to add somebody a veteran well, we know that at 23 he can come in and he can score right now um uh, Number nine, Donovan clinging to the Grizzlies. It makes all the sense in the world to me. They lost Stephen Adams. Uh, clinging is a defensive anchor. Um, they're their best when they had a big guy screening. Uh, it just there's not too much to say here. I mean, I, it's, it seems seamless to me. And rounding out the top ten, I have Zachary Reese say falling. I know ESPN has him number one again. I know he had the great game. But if you look at the totality of his film, he's still a make or miss guy. Everybody's a make or miss guy, but he's still his best when that three point shot is falling. Um, but let me ask you a question really briefly. You know, this one is, I guess, more or less so about me. But how would you feel about Reese Shea falling to 10? Uh, I would be pretty happy because uh, as I've thought about this process for the Jazz, I think there's a couple guys that could fall to the Jazz with potential, and it just depends on how how the teams draft above the jazz in terms of, Hey, uh, are we going to trust safety or are we going to go for boom or bust? And I think a lot of teams will be safety. And so that takes away a guy like Reese Ashe, who's archetype to me. I've mentioned is, I think he's a poor man, Michael Porter jr. Or maybe like a cam Johnson. And mm-hmm. now if you put a cam Johnson that you can draft at 10 and what's deemed a poor draft, someone who gets $24 million in his second contract and Reese Ashe is younger and presumably could be better. Um, I'd be pretty content with the Jazz getting him at 10. I think a guy like him or I know Connect in your draft is number eight, and I have no qualms with that because they need a, an established score to complement their young stars. Um, but but I'd be uh, pretty darn happy because the more I evaluate Reese Sashay, the more I like him, even though initially I was kind of soured on the idea because everyone talks about him as number one. But if he's a seventh pick, I'd be pretty happy. Now, if he's a 10th pick to my favorite team, I'd be, I'd be pretty darn happy. Cool. Well, before we carry on, Let's tell you about this next portion here. FanDuel. It's winner take all time in the NBA and NHL. And FanDuel is giving you a shot to bring home a big win of your own. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with a winning $5 bet. That's $150 to bet on spreads and money lines, player props, and more. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and make every playoff shot count. FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Visit FanDuel.com to look at odds to in, at odds to include. All right. So, yes, look at those odds. Pick your, pick your spots. Do what you have to do. All right. So, this last segment here, we're going to round out the lottery. And at the 11th pick, I have the Chicago Bulls. Selecting Tyler Smith from the G League Ignite. Uh, I think Tyler Smith is. I think he's underrated in this in this um, draft cycle. I think a lot of people see the upside of Tijon Saloon, and I feel like 
on paper, Tyler does everything just as well, if not better, and he has a better understanding of the game. Um, I think he feels the need. I think Chicago should definitely hit the reset button because it's time. You know, you can't keep trying out <laughs> these 10th seed, these 10th seed teams, these play these playing teams. Um, and I, I like Tyler a lot. I think he can shoot. I think he he measured at what, six nine barefoot. He was huge, and, and he and he's enormous. His shoulders are enormous. He, he walked out with the, like right after the bigs. It was like Edie, Ware, Ryan Dunn, um, Sar, and someone else. And he walked out, and I was like, man, that guy's just as big as those guys, and turn up to the shoulders. That he's just not quite as long, and he, he can shoot it. He looks smooth, and he ran very quickly three quarter court. Uh, personally, I'm I'm all in on Tijon Salon right now. I've been watching a lot of his film, and I'm I'm moving him up my board. I haven't quite put out my post combine board, but it's going to be pretty high. But uh, I like Smith too. He's he's in my lottery as well. Cool. You know, if somebody was like, "Hey, we'll take Tijon here," I completely understand. But I I really like Tyler. I think he made like 63s and had like 58 dunks. And like that's what you want from your power forward. And he looks like a little kid in the face, so he might still even be growing. So I, I'm a big Tyler Smith fan. Um, number 12, and this is uh, I guess you could say a controversial, one of the, my two controversial picks here, but I'm all in on Jalen Tyson. I feel like the Thunder basically showed you what they need the most, arguably. Now, somebody will say well, they can go big here, and you know what. I'm high on Deron Holmes. If Deron Holmes somehow slid this high and you said, well, we can we can draft a big, he can help on the glass, and we can still maintain our five-out offense. If you're buying Chet, playing on the perimeter, and taking advantage of guys guarding him on the four, which is a step he's going to have to take regardless, then maybe you take Deron Holmes here. If, you're sit here, if you sit here and say, you know, through four games, we were even on the glass with Dallas, they didn't get us – on the glass until the last two games. We're going to stick with our five out offense, but we need another shot creator, shot maker with size. I think you go with Jalen Tyson. Here. Where's Cody Williams, the younger brother of J dub. I think, I think Jalen Tyson is a better player than Cody Williams. I'm not the highest on Cody Williams. I see he's, he's very thin. He's a straight line driver. And I don't know if I buy him as a shot creator, and I don't feel like that is what the Thunder need, which is him, what he does. Now, I will say in my mock, I have him going to the Sixers at 16. Okay, not not yeah. too low. I, the only reason I think that's possible is Presti's very much a let's take a young guy with potential, but maybe his tune changes a little bit with as they're kind of nearing their contention. I don't think I, – I personally expected them to lose the Mavericks, mm -hmm. uh, um, but I don't think – it would be crazy to say that next year they could be a contender for the title. I don't think they were this year, even though they were number one seed in the best conference. I don't think anyone really thought they were going to win the title. Maybe it changes his philosophy to go for needs and, and solid bases, as opposed to high ceiling guys that you can take your time to establishing because their timelines changed. And that's my thinking. I think that the way that the CBA has been structured, there's no, I think when you have somebody in their prime, which you have in SGA, I think you have to try to make that move like right away. And you don't, I think you we've learned that you don't have necessarily three and four years. Like you can strike while the iron's hot. You know, like the the Nuggets won a championship last year. They're at home right now. They may have to retool because they got they gotta figure out how they're gonna pay Aaron Gordon in a couple of years. And he's their two B as far as importance. And but to keep it back on the draft, like I just feel like Jalen Tyson, if we're, we need somebody right now who can create a shot and make a shot also. And I feel like at 6'7", you, you still have the size. I'm, I like Kaysen. Um, Dort played great defense. I like Isaiah Joe, but ultimately, like, they dare those guys to shoot. And, you know, SGA needs his space. He needs his, he needs his rim attacks. And you're not going to get those as frequently as you – uh, want to if you know we're daring guys to shoot and I feel like Jason Jalen Tyson can he can do both he can, he should be able to do what they I I thought they were going to let uh, Gordon Hayward do when they you know trade for him at the deadline 13 again this is another one I'm a lot higher on I like Hunter Salas I'm a big Hunter Salas fan I think he can 
he's a combo. I think he measured out to be almost six four barefoot. I think he does need to put on some weight, but he can. He's very, very good in pick and roll. I think he was one of the better pick and roll players that we have in this draft. I think his shooting splits are ridiculous. He was at like 40% off the catch, and he's at 46% off the dribble shooting. I know that uh, three-point shooting was his biggest, like, obviously his biggest plus, and along with that was his confidence as he trans transitioned from Gonzaga to Wake Forest. But ultimately, I think he can play on the ball, he can play off the ball, and I think he competes on defense. And regardless of you like the Salas pick or not, or not, excuse me, I think the Kings need to be in position to take another guard because they're probably going to lose Malik Monk to free agency. And I, you know, I think Harrison Barnes is like 32. So I think another wing would be good, but I'm, I'm, I'm going to stand on Hunter Salas Island by myself if that's what it means, but I'm a believer in his talent. I think he finishes well at the rim. He's a, he's a really good player to me. I like Salas. Uh, it's a little rich for me, but I understand the, the logic behind it. Uh, I'm not sure exactly where I'd go, but the interesting thing is Salas didn't play in the combine scrimmages, which mm -hmm. typically means for someone who's projected where he typically is not in James's mock, but in a lot of mocks, it typically means that they've got some guarantees that they're going higher or they're, uh, they're just not really wanting to show their metal. That doesn't give me Salas vibes. I mean, he's, mm -hmm. he became the dude and wanted all the action. Like he got it all at uh, Wake Forest after sitting two years, more or less at Gonzaga playing off the ball, just shooting corner threes. So it surprised me a little bit. He didn't play in the combine. I thought he was somebody who could help him, but it, what it meant to me is that he probably is going higher than a lot of the consensus believes. So well, 13 seems a little rich to me. I do think he's going to be a first rounder. Yeah, I I agree with you. Like I said, I, I like him a lot. And I, regardless of it's not him, I just feel like he, if we're saying we need somebody who still has some upside, but is ready to go right now, I think you want the 21 year old experienced guy and not necessarily the, the young guy who still is trying to figure it out. All right. Rounding out the lottery. We do have the leaf, the new <laughs> fan, of Tijan Salon. Again, he's climbing the ranks. He's been playing well. Um, I've been hearing good things about him off the record. Uh, if he goes higher, I would not be surprised. I still think he's extremely raw and he's a few years away, but if not a better place, Portland, because they're not in any rush to win and you can play him, you can develop him and see what he turns out to be. Um, really quick, Leaf, why are you a T. John Salon fan all of a sudden? Well, I've had him in my lottery all year. Uh, he's someone I just think that I've always been a potential, like a believer in potential. So I, I thought, okay, if there's a guy that has the body he has and the talent that he looks like is there at times, like he shot up to 39% early in the season professionally as an 18 year old at six foot nine, 210 pounds, and that's pretty darn rare. Um, so I've had him in my lottery the entire season right now. I'm, I've got him around seven or eight. I haven't quite put together the board yet. But the reason is I, I'm seeing him do things that moved Bilal Koulibaly fairly or unfairly in what's considered a really good draft last year to number seven. But he's bigger. He scored more all season. His shot was more productive all season. And I see more on ball capacity, not necessarily as like the initiator of an offense, but just more refined movements with the ball in his hands. And I believe in potential. Like I said, I'm never going to really change my my colors, change my stripes on the way I want to draft. Yes, this this draft may make you evaluate a little differently. Like you're not hitting home runs always, but he's got a better chance to be a home run than a lot of guys. And I think that he's a little less raw than uh, in comparison to some of these guys, like I think that Cody Williams is, is raw to some degree. I think mm -hmm. that Ron Holland is raw to some degree. Mm -hmm. I, I think that some of the more developed players that in this class are either older, like Dalton connect, or mm -hmm. they have a little less potential. Um, mm -hmm. and I'm not saying he's all boom or bust or all those guys are all just floor, no ceiling, but I, but I think you have to compare it to this draft for him, much like you compare the safety of this draft to other players that are safe because I don't think he's that much more raw than guys that we have safely in the top 10, like Buzelis. Mm -hmm. um, Buzelis can't really shoot right now. Salown's a better shooter percentage-wise playing professionally. He's bigger. And, yet, yet we're and he's bigger, um, physically bigger. They're about the same height. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, to me, I think you're, you're calling apples and oranges different things because 
uh, if you're, if you're going to say he's raw and I'm not saying this just of you, but if you're going to say he's raw, I think you have to say other players are raw as well. So it's worth the gamble more so than maybe people are saying it. Oh, you're going to get someone who's not going to be able to contribute for a few years. Well, you very well could be drafting someone at five or six. That's not able to contribute at the same rate in this draft. It's, it's a guess and it's an, uh, in and of itself, but I'm willing to take that gamble because of the traits he has displayed at a high level. And he's getting better as the year goes on in the playoffs. And typically you see guys that, have rudimentary skill sets kind of fold in those aspects. And he's, he's been good in the playoffs so far. Hey, I'm not going to argue with you. Well, Hey, again, thank you very much for listening. That concludes my mock draft. Again, if you want to argue with me, you want to call me whatever you want in the comments on YouTube, that's perfectly fine. I'll try to explain myself, but Hey, again, if you have ideas, we want to hear from you. You can tweet leaf. You can tweet me. But before we go, let me tell you, Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. And it now is available on Amazon Fire TV and free Fire TV channels at Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7, 24-7, excuse me, covering the top sports stories of the day with local experts at the Locked On Plus, our national covering every league find locked on sports today now available on the fire on the free fire tv channels app james leaf we are signing off thank you